How would you guys feel about like skins in Guilty Gear? Like if, if there were like purchasable DLC skins, like with real money. If you can fish them and earn them, I'd put the skins. Don't care for them against skins. Those exist, but color changes. Yeah, but I mean like an actual... So like think of like, uh, you know, like a mod, right? A, a good example idea, right? That I thought of the other day is there's a mod for Jacko, which is like bunny girl Jacko, right? And it basically gives her like bunny ears and she has a like, she looks like a, one of those Las Vegas bunny girls. Right? Not as like that's a good idea for a skin, just as a good example of like what a skin could be, right? And it would be like, you know, like, fucking, I don't know, like, fucking Bunny Jacko. And that's that's the skin name, right? You could buy it. Would they take up character drops? Uh, no, I would assume it wouldn't. Because it, like, you would assume that the money that they would make would, like, be able to fund itself to the point where it's outside of character creation. No, I know, I you know, but I know modding is, like, a, a, a thing for Guilty Gear. Like, that's, but that's kind of like the replacement, right, of skins. Right, like, if there was no modding, would you want to see skins? Like, complete, pretend like modding doesn't exist, right? I'll be down as long as they have similar models for themselves and animations don't change. Hmm. Got a mod that gives Jacko a soul bad guy's outfit. I'll probably buy that if it was a skin. Yes, you would. Rather a game mechanic? Yeah. Hmm. I think I agree with Nay in the sense of, like, I think it's very important visually that they don't change, right? This a big if, but what if Arxis becomes mod supports? Mod support, yeah, and they make fucking fat Elfelt. Yeah, that'd be sick. Arxis works on fucking fat Elfelt. <laughs> Official DLC that you can buy. By skins, I mean, like, it wouldn't affect, like, particles or, like, moves and animations, right? It would just be, like, the actual outfit of the character, and it wouldn't change chart boxes or anything like that. So, say, for example, with this Milia skin, right? It would just, like, I don't know, like, take off the hat and be in a different outfit, right? Kind of like in the way that if you look at um, Street Fighter Six does it right like you have like jury where they just give her a fucking pajama and onesie outfit and call it a day you know kind of like that but like for different characters but I'm, I'm thinking also as a point from like i don't think uh modding gets people excited for the game is the same as like actual dlc content releases right like official implemented things in the game and not that as well like you want arxis to be able to make money right off their endeavors because otherwise they just keep adding back like, a few DLC characters for a bit of side change while they work on the next game, right? Because you would assume that most of their money comes from season passes and box sales of the game. Ready to embrace my oops journey and pick up pot? Uh, not just yet, man. Not just yet. But if I if, if I ever enter a state of psychosis, I'll let you know. Tekken 8 character customizations. I, I like the Tekken 8 character customizations, but I feel like it's also very limited as well. Like, I feel like it's missing some stuff. The skins would be completely cosmetic. It wouldn't change effects or anything like that. It would just be, um, you know, like, just different outfits. Like, I mean, if you look at the mods, it's a pretty good example of, like, what the skins will kind of look like. Outside of, like, the fucking, obviously, the porn ones. Hot tuxedo skin? That would go fucking hard, actually. Summer HD if you had a water gun? Yeah, just, like, shit like that. And then they could actually, like, you know, uh, create the models and stuff for it, and it's professionally done and looks good, right? Like, I feel like there's a lot of potential for, like, skin sort of base content that keeps the game fresh in in the interim between you know characters and balance changes because like i said like you know real most of the time you're sitting there a character comes out you get a few balance changes you get a new character and then it's it's you're waiting right you're kind of just being chilling waiting for the new character waiting for the next balance change and then that's the content of the game right and then the meta changes a little bit, depending on what they do. Characters get a little stronger and weaker. And then you call it a day, right? And you're waiting for the next character. In that interim of like three to four months period, they could release like a few different skins and stuff. That is not only going to make Arxis money, but lets people support the game. And also just adds like content. Like people will be like, oh, shit, did you see the new skin that they added to like Guilty Gear, right? Like people unironically do that with other games. Something people like doing if, whether they're going to willing to admit it or not, is people like going onto a game and opening up the cash shop. People like looking at the stuff that's being made. Fortnite, perfect example. How many, like, me personally, right? I don't give a fuck about the Fortnite skins. I really don't care. Like, because I'm never going to buy any of them, right? But I'll still go on the shop and look at what they have, even though I'm not even interested in buying it, right? It's cool to see the new shit they're adding.
No, so so by changing models, like it would still be the base character. For the example that was given was like a Happy Basically Chaos the water gun, right? Characters of the GGSD characters like Nago that rotate every week, and if you beat them, you get that boss skin of the character. I mean, even that would be cool, right? It's something different. The the example that was before is like Happy Chaos, like giving him like a summer theme one, where instead of having his jacket, he has like a open Hawaiian vest, like a right, like a Hawaiian T-shirt, and like board shorts, and his guns were water pistols, right? It's like all you're doing is changing the guns to water pistols, really. You know, and then like changing the shirt. The the character himself stays the same. That it would have to, right? Out of like the pure like <laughs> making the game flow properly, because they have hit boxes and hurt boxes, and if you fuck with the character model, you fuck with the hurt boxes, right? Yeah, I don't know. I I think that Guilty Gear just has a massive void of content outside of character releases, which makes like. I mean, that reflects the interest of the game, right? Like, really, really, really bad. Like, I mean, if you go, like, look on Steam charts, right? The only time people come back to this game is when there's a new character. And then over that three-month period, the game fucking dies. And it's not like it, it, um... It, it dies in the sense of, like, you know, everyone comes, they play the new character, and then they fuck off, right? The game actually slowly starts dropping players over the months. While they're waiting for the new character to come out. You know, I, I don't think that's good for the game long-term. Because you want you want a reason for people to be like, oh, you know, this thing's coming, this thing's coming. You want people to be excited about the game. I don't think you really want. Uh, I don't really think you want people to be like, oh, okay, cool. I played the new character for a bit. I, I was a fan of him. I didn't really like him. Okay, cool. And then they, they log out and they don't touch the game again. You want to give people a reason to keep logging in and playing the game, right? And while it's a fighting game and a lot of it's like self-propelled sort of progression. I think as well, like having visual and customization sort of things alongside that makes it feel like there's new content being added as well, right? Well, they have events with limited skins, like they need content rotates, like Pokemon Girl with weather and spawnable Pokemon or Valorant with rewards and events, yeah. I think Overwatch does a good job with that as well, right? With like the summer games and stuff and like the Winter Veil skins and like event themed skins that they go with, right? Or like, I guess even now with like their Battle Pass sort of skins, right? They have like a, a theme, like the other... Like a few months ago, or whatever it was, like the um, the Greek theme, right? Like the old Olympian theme, and then they just got a bunch of like Greek mythology characters and like made skins for them, right? Like I, th I think like that would be really good as well. Even even just like alongside, like do you know how many people went to fucking play Grand Blue when those like that titty fucking Namaya skin came out? Like <laughs> it's nuts. And I, I don't even know if that's purchasable. I'm pretty sure it is, right? Like the Namaya um booby skin I'm pretty sure that costs money it's not like it's in the actual in-game shop that you can buy with the uh, the tokens is a battle pass skin oh well, there you go that, that's what I mean like I mean even if like in, like guilty gear had a fucking battle pass system in I don't think people would be like mad about it right I don't think people get mad about skins in games and shit. like the reason why people get angry at like you know say for example Street Fighter adding these skins right they add skins, they add one character skin per character, and some of them are kind of like mid, to be honest. Like, they're not really intrinsically very cool or interesting. Um, but then they'll cost, you know, a decent amount of money, and the game itself is already like 110 bucks, in like in Australian dollars, right? Like, Guilty Gear is a lot cheaper on the side of like the price point, especially with the amount of sales they have on the game. And depending on how, like, how they price the skins, it's just the quality of content, right? Like, if you... People will pay for it, like the... I think the Jury Pajama skin is... I bought the fucking onesie skin, right? I don't even fucking play Street Fighter, I bought that skin. Because it's a good fucking skin, right? People will buy it if it's good. And I think that just opens more, like, avenues for Arxis to, like, you know, profit and make more content for the game. And then it's just better for players as well, you get more content. I feel like adding characters only brings people for a short time. They should host tournaments and give out drugs to really get people... Dude, very true. Actually, that's so based. <laughs> They should, they should lace all the, the Red Bull drinks at fucking Evo with, like, meth and get people hooked. I think, ultimately, people will buy it if it's worth the money, right? Like, if, it, if it's a good value proposition, people are going to buy it. There's no, like, there's no doubt. When it's not a good value proposition, that's when people got, like, pissy about it, right? Like, uh, Grand Blue got a lot of slack for it because they added the battle pass or whatever, or the character pass on the launch of the game. They cost the same price of the fucking game. $170 in the game and it's worth it? Yeah, no, 100%. I've, I've, I've bought the fucking, like, PlayStation colors or whatever. I'm, I'm pretty sure I own all the DLC in the game. 
Or like, if not most of it. Right? Um, and I don't think I bought it in the passes either. I think I've, I individually purchased. So I've spent a decent amount of money on the game. But the amount of money that I've spent versus how much I play it, it, it like, weighs itself out, right? It's worth the money and I'm not upset that I spent the money. Because it, 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 it was worth it. And I think that's the case for like, a lot of people. So I feel like they could add like, additional cosmetics and customization if it was worth it, right? People would buy it. And I mean, think about the money that Canarxus would make from it, bro. You make a hot fucking Jacko skin, and because like, they have characters like that, if, if they make a fucking like, bunny girl Jacko skin, that shit's gonna sell like wildfire. I mean, look at Jury, right? Like, the Jury skin, whoa, people were swiping, man, swiping. <laughs> Bikini Eno, genuinely, Bikini Eno would change the internet. But I mean, like, Guilty Gear already has like, influences in like, you know, like the Jacko pose, for example, right? That, so many people found out about the Jack O pose and they didn't even know what, that, where it's from, you know? I don't know about you, but like in the, when you listen to, you know, like YouTube content talking about games and stuff, I, I watch videos talking about like skins or whatever the f for games that I don't even play or I'm not even interested in. It's like, oh my God, this like Apex, for example, like the heirloom sh that they're doing is egregious. Like the amount of money that they're spending on, on like reskin and heirlooms is like insane. It's like four hundred dollars or something. And like I, I know about that. And that I hear about Apex. Literally, I know Apex is relevant and exists because I hear about it. Right? When the fuck do you hear about Guilty Gear? Like, if you're someone who's not in the Guilty Gear scene, how are you supposed to hear about Guilty Gear? Like through a friend. That's about it, right? Like, like I feel like the only time that Guilty Gear gets like any sort of shine is I think the Game Awards um, thing that they did for Elfel, very good. I think that was insane. And like, it, it shows on the graph, right? Like, a bunch of people saw Elfelt, they thought it was cool, they checked it out, right? That's, that's advertisement for you, right? And if you can get it where you're, you know, you're appealing to people who play video games, you know, that's even better. Um, but you know, like, outside of that, like, how do they advertise the game? It's like Evo. It's like, okay, People who fucking are at EVO probably know about Guilty Gear and have probably played Guilty Gear. You know? Like, I feel like expanding out to an audience of people who play video games and showing them, hey, we have cool characters over here in, in Guilty Gear, you should come try fighting games, is going to get way more new people in. Right? And I think a lot of, um, a lot of people are getting into fighting games through, like, I mean, like, either content the game's making or content creation itself. I mean, look at uh, the tech and shit going on now with Sejam. Like, uh, uh, I literally get recommended every day. It's like Lily Pichu training to try and get purple rank. You know? Street Fighter's doing pretty well at it. I'm excited for this. Yeah, like the, the, the Tekken event is going to be like very interesting, right? But it, it's pulling a bunch of new people in and if their viewers watch, a bunch of people are going to pick up Tekken. Like, I know some of my friends have picked up Tekken who don't play fighting games. And Tekken's like their first fighting game and they're playing it, right? Like, you got to appeal to, like, constantly try and appeal to, like, a new audience. Because if you're always appealing to a new audience, that's how you're going to keep growing, right? Because if, 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 you're, if you're built off a new audience, you're always going to appeal to a new audience. So if someone hasn't seen the game, they're going to be interested, right? And so long as you just keep updating the game and stuff, people will stick around for it. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I think anyway. Special thanks to Sia and all my other supporters for helping me continue to make videos like this. If you liked the video, consider becoming a member. You get a cute star next to your name in the comments, you get to see new videos early, and some other cool stuff you can see by hitting the join button below. Thank you again very much for your support.